Los Angeles Lakers team really go? And how great can this big three really be? And yeah, I said big three, but obviously there's a lot of questions surrounding this big three. Is it really a big three? What do you guys think down below? I personally believe that it could be. I do personally believe that DeMarcus Cousins has that chance to return to being a third option. He doesn't have to be the star of the team, not even the second star on this team, just a third option. You gotta think about it, he was a 16 and 8 guy in a Warriors team with 4 NBA All-Stars as arguably the 5th or 4th option on that team, only playing 25 minutes per game and only playing 30 games and then being re-injured. You don't think he can average 4 more points and average 2 more rebounds and be a 20 and 10 guy again as the third option? I believe that is very possible. So, how far do I think the Los Angeles Lakers can go? And do I think that they are as good as the Los Angeles Clippers? Which means, could they possibly be the best team in the Western Conference? Well, let's find out. Firstly, before I get started, if you are new around here and you enjoy NBA content, be sure to hit that subscribe button for daily NBA content. And if you enjoy these types of videos, be sure to smash that like button as it supports the channel, and that would be greatly appreciated. It would mean a lot. Anyway, let's get into it. Even if he isn't the DeMarcus Cousins that we once knew and watched as the greatest big man in the game, now, even if he's the third option, that is still classified as a big three. LeBron James is arguably the greatest player even in today's NBA at 35 years old. Anthony Davis, if healthy, is the best big man in the game, especially at the power forward position. And then DeMarcus Cousins as that third option along with Kyle Kuzma. The Lakers are still in a very, very good position and here's why. Of course they're in the Western Conference, which is the toughest conference and has been for many, many years. And whilst the Western Conference is obviously extremely stacked and has improved with teams like the Denver Nuggets most likely improving with Michael Porter Jr. back, and they're obviously just a young team that will most likely improve even more. The Utah Jazz, they've obviously improved a lot, and to me, they could be the sleeper in this year's NBA season. And obviously the Clippers improved a lot by adding Paul George and Kawhi Leonard. But when you think about it, the Warriors do not have Klay Thompson. They added D'Angelo Russell, but offensively, it's amazing. Defensively, they obviously will not be as good, which means they probably lose a few more games. The Trailblazers, they got Hassan Whiteside to replace Nurkic, but are they really going to improve that much? The Rockets didn't add anyone, which means they probably decrease, considering that other teams will be better. And they're only getting older with age, and that means normally guys like CP3, PJ Tucker start to decline just a little bit. The Thunder obviously losing Paul George, and most likely Russell Westbrook will fall out of the playoffs. The Spurs didn't really add too many pieces and they don't seem like they're going to improve that much. Like I understand they've got Marcus Morris and obviously Damari Carroll, but does that really push them as one of the best teams in the West? Probably not. And then all the other teams like the Mavericks, Pelicans, Grizzlies, Timberwolves, and Kings, well, they do improve by adding young pieces, but yeah, they are just young pieces. Obviously, the Pelicans are the wild card here. They may just sneak into the playoffs, as they still have Drew Holiday, JJ Redick, who are guys that can actually lead this team, Derek Favors they picked up, and obviously, we don't know how great Zion Williamson will be. Brandon Ingram is there, Lonzo Ball is there. Like, this is definitely the biggest wild card. Which means the Lakers are in that interesting spot where obviously they improve a lot off last season, adding Anthony Davis, the best big man in the game. And the Western Conference is still very wide open, even with the Clippers, the Jazz, the Nuggets being the best teams, I still believe the Lakers definitely match up with them. So let's say the Lakers make the playoffs. They just have to make the playoffs. That's all they have to do, make the playoffs, which most likely they're going to make the playoffs. Who's going to defend Anthony Davis and even just the shell of DeMarcus Cousins? The Warriors and their big man situation. I mean, they still have Draymond Green and Willie Colley-Stein, so they can still defend them, but that's going to be an interesting situation. As for everybody else, well, the Rockets really only have Clint Capella. I mean, PJ Tucker, he is a good defender, but he's not going to match up against Anthony Davis. The Portland Trailblazers have Zach Collins and Hassan Whiteside as of now, and then Nurkic gets back, but I don't see Nurkic and Whiteside playing together, and Nurkic isn't a great defender. The Jazz match up well with Rudy Gobert at the center position, but if Anthony Davis is playing at the four, then that's going to be an interesting situation for them. Who's going to match up with Anthony Davis? And then you look at the Clippers, and yeah, they've got Harrell, but number one, he's pretty undersized for that center position at six foot eight. So if he matches up on Anthony Davis, that still leaves DeMarcus Cousins as a guy that will destroy Zubac. Even though Zubac is decent, 
He's still very young and he probably won't be able to handle Boogie Cousins. It's kind of like the 76ers situation in the Eastern Conference. Once they make the playoffs, no matter what seed they get, who is going to match up against Al Horford, who is actually a power forward, that is his true position, and Joel Embiid? No one. That is the point. At the big man position, nobody can match up with the 76ers in the East or with the Lakers in the West, in my opinion. Yes, there are some teams that have one great big man, but then they lack at the other big man. The only real team is the Golden State Warriors, who have Draymond Green, and Willie Colley Stein in my opinion. But as a whole, we talk about the Clippers being amazing defensively, and obviously they are. Pat Bev, Kawhi, Paul George, Harold, and obviously full credit is there. But the Lakers aren't all that bad either. If LeBron James actually decides to play defense, which in the playoffs, he tends to set his defensive game up when it counts. That means you have Danny Green, which is a very, very good defensive shooting guard. Rondo, while still aging, he has shown signs of his defense in the past, and yes, he is older and not as great on defense, and he's obviously not comparable to Patrick Beverly, but he can still be a solo player in the playoffs, especially on the defensive end. Plus, you add Anthony Davis in there, which is one of the top defensive big men in the league, and we don't really need to discuss their offense. We all know they have LeBron. Davis, Kuzma, DeMarcus Cousins, but it's their bench step that is still going unnoticed. Yes, they missed out on some of the other guys in this year's free agency, but they have done really well since. Danny Green is really good. Quinn Cook is very solid. DeMarcus Cousins will probably play off the bench. Put it past the Lakers to run Kuzma off and on as a six man and as a starter at times, depending on if they rest LeBron or if they rest Davis and what happens there, because sometimes they will need a spark off the bench and they still have the ability to get guys like Andre Iguodala, Karl Korver and other pieces to make their bench even better. And if they can add Andre Iguodala in there, that as a bench unit is very solid. And to me, if they can get Andre Iguodala, I believe they match what the Clippers have. And I understand that because of the hype and because of Kawhi Leonard and Paul George, there is a lot of hype at the moment. But once the season starts, the hype dies down and it really becomes about who can mesh well together and who plays well as a team. And I believe that the Clippers have a very, very good team. Lou Williams, Patrick Beverly, Paul George, Kawhi Leonard, Harrell, and they do have some decent guys off the bench. But you can't tell me that the Lakers aren't at that position either. LeBron James? Anthony Davis? That is arguably as great as Kawhi Leonard and Paul George, if not better. And then you have that big man piece of DeMarcus Cousins vs. Harrell. And obviously defensively, the Lakers aren't as good, but you have that scoring option of the bench in Kyle Kuzma vs. Lou Williams. And then if the Lakers can acquire Andre Iguodala, that kind of equals out the defense in Patrick Beverly. So the Lakers and the Clippers aren't too dissimilar. They don't have the same team in terms of positions, but what the players do at their positions is different and similar at the same time. They have their scorers, their defenders, their star players, and all together. Together, it's not too dissimilar from each other. So if you think that the Clippers going all the way in this year's NBA playoffs, I'm just here to say Lakers probably won't be that far behind and the Lakers may even be a better team than what the Los Angeles Clippers are right now. But even if you don't value DeMarcus Cousins and you don't think he's a great fit on the Lakers, let's talk about Kyle Kuzma. Kyle Kuzma is a guy that is entering his third season in the league, 24 years old. He averaged almost 19 points last season, five and a half rebounds, shooting 70% from the free throw line and 30% from three. And obviously, he has a lot to improve on, especially with the three point percentage. 30% last season was a decrease from his 36% from the year before in his first season as a rookie. But you can only imagine that that can increase. If he shot 36% in his first ever season, I believe that last season he was just getting used to playing with LeBron. There's a lot of expectations there. But if he can increase that to like his first season at 36%, and even if he can average four more points, he will be a 23 point scorer as the third option and really only needs to focus on his defense. Defensively, once again, that is the issue in both DeMarcus Cousins and Kyle Kuzma. But once again, with a full offseason and a chance to focus primarily on health and defense, I don't see why Kuzma and DeMarcus can't come back even just a tiny bit better of what they were last season, especially on the defensive end. Especially Kuzma, he has the potential, he is still young, athletic, lengthy. I believe he has the potential to be a better defender than what he is at the moment. 
When you think about DeMarcus Cousins, he had a very rough stint last season. Obviously, he came off an Achilles injury. A guy of his size to come off an Achilles injury is very hard to come back and play at his former self. You obviously need time. Look at Gordon Hayward. He didn't even come off an Achilles injury, but he just needs time. Paul George, when he came back, he obviously just needed time. And now, just a few seasons later, he's an MVP candidate again. So I believe personally when a player tears something or has an injury as big as this, it's important for them to rest and have a full offseason and preseason to get healthy again. Which is exactly what's going to happen with DeMarcus Cousins. So DeMarcus Cousins only played 30 regular season games last season, and obviously he was very lackluster, but to be on a team with Stephen Curry, Kevin Durant, Klay Thompson, Draymond Green, for DeMarcus Cousins, he wasn't going to have the shots that he had in New Orleans or in Sacramento, he wasn't going to be the main guy anyway, so you can't expect a lot from DeMarcus Cousins. In 30 minutes per game, in a completely new and changed system, a completely different team, DeMarcus Cousins still averaged. 16 points as he only shot 12 shots per game which is the lowest that he's had by a long way in his time in the NBA if you count out the first couple of years in his career he still averaged 8 rebounds which a guy coming off an Achilles injury is still very solid considering they had a defensive system where Draymond Green was a guy that went for a lot of the rebounds and then a steal per game, one and a half blocks per game, once again from a guy returning from an Achilles injury in only 25 minutes. And then obviously once he returned, he then got injured again, which is extremely unlucky. And that is probably one of the reasons why a lot of NBA teams didn't go for him this season, is obviously because of the risk factor with DeMarcus Cousins getting re-injured. But for the Lakers, you already have JaVale McGee anyway, and you may as well have taken that risk, and I think it's going to pay off for them. A full offseason to finally get healthy and show what he can do. Eliminate all his past injuries and focus on the future in a team that will probably most likely use him a lot more than in Golden State. I feel like they can only benefit DeMarcus Cousins. And even if they don't play him 30 minutes per game, even just the 25 minutes per game, because you still have JaVale McGee, that will probably do DeMarcus Cousins wonders. And he will probably still have the shot attempts that he had in New Orleans or Sacramento, considering that if he does come off the bench, or even if he does start, LeBron is a willing passer and will most likely try and feed Anthony Davis and DeMarcus Cousins. And that can only be a good thing for DeMarcus. And if you have a 20 point scorer as your third option, that is still a big three in my opinion. This team is still a team that is arguably the greatest team in the Western Conference besides what everybody is saying about the Clippers, the Jazz, the Warriors, the Rockets. The LA Lakers, despite not getting Kawhi Leonard, are still in a great position and can still be the best team in the NBA. With that said, let me know what you guys think about the Lakers and what their potential is. Do they still have a big three with DeMarcus Cousins? Can he play as the DeMarcus Cousins that we once knew and once watched? If you enjoy this